go through it. Okay. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Our November 10th, 2016 City of Palatka Commission meeting is now called to order. We will have our invocation by Reverend Ted Stackpole, Pastor of First Assembly of God. We also ask Reverend Stackpole, will you lead us in the place of the flag? Will everyone please stand for us? Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you today for these commissioners. I ask today that they would be blessed, protected, and successful in their role before you. I ask today that they would serve under your authority with honor, respect, wisdom, compassion, and godliness. <clears throat> Help them to use good judgment, pursue justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Be with them as they watch over, protect, lead, and serve the citizens of our beloved city. May they be able to establish ordinances that honor your laws and strengthen families. Bless them for being godly examples in their roles and responsibilities. Bring unity and synergy to their work and decisions that lie before them today. May the city of Palatka once again find its way through you and prosper for your glory. In the name of Jesus. Roll call, please. Mayor Hill? Here. Vice Mayor Brown? Present. Mayor Moore? Present. Present. Work hard. Commissioner Campbell? Present. Commissioner Newell Wood? Present. All members of President County Court and House Thank you. Has everyone had an opportunity to look at the minutes from the October 27, 2016 meeting? Motion to Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second. Is there any discussion? Question is called. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, motion carries unanimously. It's for National Hospice and Palliative Care Month. And we've got Christian Knight in Haven Hospice. Would you please come forward this time? <clears throat> Thank you. This proclamation reads as follows. Whereas hospice and palliative care empowers people facing a serious or life-limiting illness to live as fully as possible, surrounded and supported by family and loved ones, and whereas through pain and management and symptom control, caregiving, training, and assistance, and emotional and spiritual support, hospice and palliative, and palliative care allows patients to live and make more meaningful moments until the end, surrounded and supported by the faces of loved ones, friends, and committed caregivers. And whereas every year more than 1.5 to 1.6 million Americans living in life-limiting illnesses and their families receive care from the nation's hospice programs in communities throughout the United States. And whereas Haven Hospice believes that everyone deserves comfort, care, and compassion. And whereas Haven Hospice had the honor and privilege to provide direct care to 14,853 individuals and families facing a life-limiting illness throughout its 18-county service area in 2015. During that time, Haven provided counseling and grief support services to 8,628 individuals and families in, in the communities it serves. Now, therefore, I, Terrell Hill, Mayor of the City of Palatka, Florida, together with the members of the Palatka City Commission, do hereby endorse and proclaim November 2016 as National Hospice and Palliative Care Awareness Month in the City of Palatka and encourage citizens to increase their understanding and awareness of care at the end of life and to observe this month the appropriate activities and programs and witness whereof I have here and to set and cause my hand to be affixed to seal the city of Palaka on this 10th day of November, the year of our Lord, 2016. Terrell Hill Mayor, Mary Lawson Brown, Rufus Borum, Justin Campbell, and James Norwood Jr. Commissioners. Thank you all. Um, 
um, I just want to reiterate um, what he said about us taking care of individuals at the end of life. Um, we do have the privilege of, of taking care of individuals here in Putnam County, um, in their homes, in our care center, in facilities, and wherever it is that they call home. So um, we do want to thank you for allowing us to be part of the community and be able to do that service um, to your loved ones. So thank you. Um, we do have a couple of things going on in, in the for National Hospice Month, and so any of you that have a business or an organization and you'd like to participate on Friday, November the 18th, we are uh, celebrating by wearing purple. So purple is the color for, na for National Hospice, and so um, any business or organization that wants to wear purple, please feel free to. Um, we'll be going around making visits and taking pictures and putting you all on our Facebook and Twitter page, so um, be looking for us out in the community taking pictures of everyone wearing purple. So, thank you again for the opportunity, and thank you, Mayor, for the uh, proclamation. Place is thorough. Your lady I met with today knows the director of the ER over here. Do what? Yeah. Do what? <laughs> As I <it> should. <laughs> we also have our next item up is a recognition for Old Waterworks Environmental Volunteer <clears throat> Recognition. operated for 100 years, closed in 1986, and now it is an environmental education center. So tonight, um, thank you to the commissioners and mayor and your staff for all of your support of Waterworks because we not only have fun there, but we have built a lot of things. Our volunteers have expended thousands of hours, and these are, uh, some of them are here tonight, some of them are over at the St. John's River Center because there's the Whitney um, event going on, <coughs> and then others like the first one, Platt Drew, many of you remember Platt, he's in Georgia. Um, but I will call the names of the recipients, and some of them are here, and I just want to say thank you because I know that it takes um, a lot of energy to not only do everything we do, but to add these kinds of things on, onto that. I also want to say thanks to Mandy Tucker, to Jonathan Griffith, and Jermaine Douglas, because they've been especially, just every time I call, they're right there ready to help us. Okay, first name is Platt Drew, so I will hold that and give it to him. We are there every Wednesday morning from 8 until noon, so he'll be back, I'm sure, and I'll make sure he gets there. Dick Franz is, come up, Mr. Franz is retired professor emeritus from the University of Florida, and he is kind of like the daddy now of Waterworks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we'll stand up here. Um, Steve Dale is another retired professor, and um, the, Steve, may, many of you probably saw his picture in the paper recently. He is a super volunteer. He's probably out picking up furniture from Lee Conley House right now. 
Uh, Dick Clark, Sam Carr, Jim and Carol McDonald, and I'll take all of these to them. Jack and Sandy Kokernuth, Jimmy Moody. Joan Gray is here tonight. Joan, there she is. Come on up. Joan is just everywhere. She works in our garden. We have an organic garden, and she helps in all, all kinds of ways. Palmer Kinzer is retired recently from St. John's <laughs> And he has just brought a wealth of information and super hard work. Uh, Ray Martin is not here. He's our keeper of the shed, our tool shed. Uh, Susan and Russ Miller. Susan and Russ. Many of you have, if you've been to Waterworks, the um, wildflower walkway is right in front of the building. Susan keeps that up. And Russ hand laid the brick that the city gave us to make the walkway that goes through it. So he looks real fashionable tonight, but he can work hard. <laughs> okay, Bob Nelson drives all the way from Jacksonville, so he's not with us tonight. Mike and Shan Purinton. Mike, my super veteran. <laughs> Uh, Mary Rich lives out in Interlochen. She drives here. Patty and Danny Sheffield, they I know are over at the Whitney thing. Uh, Joan Turnage, Phyllis Criswell, um, Tony Lang, and Lyle Zimmerman. I would also like to recognize organizations because some of these uh, bring their entire um, staff and volunteer. Florida Power and Light is one of those. And um, in fact, they are over at the Whitney as well um, at the St. John's River Center. And um, they come every year, and they work a whole Saturday and do all kinds of things. Georgia Pacific has been wonderful. CSX Railroads, because our property is right next to the railroad. They've helped us put in fencing, etc. Keep Putnam Beautiful with Marsha Marinello, who's been fabulous. Lowe's, many of you know about Lowe's Heroes. They come and they do certain things. Ravine Garden State Park. Terry Newman's is the new park manager. There she is. And she's here tonight. So. We have a great partnership with the ravines. Often students will come there, then they walk right over because we're right next to the ravines. Um, the Rotary Club of Palatka, which is my club, so I'll take that to them. And, and the Rotary Club of Palatka Sunrise, Mike and Russ are in, so we'll make sure that they get it. But those clubs, too, have spent just recently, October 1st came out, did a big cleanup for a conference that we weren't able to have because it was the same time that Matthew came to town. But um, thank you all very, very, very much. Thank you. Veterans Recognition, City Employees who are Veterans of Armed Forces. Black City Commission wishes to salute its employees that are veterans of armed forces from the airport. John Ewell, U.S. Air Force. Robert White, U.S. Army. Jim Wilborn, U.S. Marine Corps. Mr. Ewell. From the Fire Department, Austin Davis, U.S. Army. Kenneth Sugden, U.S. Navy. From the Police Department, Sergeant Cornell Brown, U.S. Army. Corporal Todd Bryant, U.S. Navy. Shirley Edwards, U.S. Army. <laughs> Officer Justin Hale, U.S. Army. Big Sergeant Brian Hawkins, U.S. Marine Corps. 
Detective Demetrius Johnson, U.S. Naval Reserve. Detective David Lazo, U.S. Navy. Sergeant Scott Reinhold, U.S. Army. Parks and Maintenance, Timothy Brooks, U.S. Army. Streets and Utilities Maintenance, Gordon Brown, U.S. Army. Anthony Cusimano, U.S. Marine Corps. Raymond Herniak, U.S. Air Force. Johnny Lewis, U.S. Army. William Neely, U.S. Army. Water Treatment Plant, Melvin Register, U.S. Air Force and Army National Guard. Wastewater Treatment Plant, Ron Asbury, U.S. Air Force and Brian McCann, U.S. Army. The Plaquemines City Commission and staff and citizens are grateful for your service to our country, for protecting our borders and preserving our freedoms. We salute all veterans for sacrificing their freedoms and putting their lives at risk to protect ours. Do we have any veterans in the audience? I'm being prompted. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Are there any more veterans? Mm -hmm. So again, we want to thank you. Uh, we want to thank you guys for the sacrifices that you made. We want to thank you for the service that you've given us. Mm -hmm. And we always will be honored to have you protect us and to have served us. So again, thank you, and happy Veterans Day. Mr. Mayor, the next time should say discussion of the property. The next one? All right, we'll push it down. We'll move it down. Uh, we will now go to what everybody's been here waiting for. <laughs> Student of the Month is canceled for the month of November. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me for Student of the Month is Commissioner Justin Campbell. So for Student of the Month, we want to take time out first and foremost to have all the parents and family members who have joined these young people to stand up at this time. Because if it wasn't for you, these young people would not be here today. It takes a village to raise a child. We thank you for being involved in their lives. We thank you for the influence that you have over them. And we look forward to more great things from them. So again, just thank you for that. Next, we want to make sure all our educators and all our school representatives that are here, you guys have a thankless job. And we want you to stand at this time so that we can recognize you as well. And oftentimes we forget to recognize you because if it wasn't for the tireless hours and the commitment that you have, our children would not be learning. So what we're going to do at this time, we'll call the student, we'll ask that the representative from each school come forward with the child. We will, we will gather around the front of the around the front of the podium. Uh, once we finish, I mean, that hurt me. we will we'll then have the school representatives <clears throat> step back. We'll take a photo with all the students in front. We'll stand at recess. Then we'll, after we've taken the group photo for the newspaper, we'll form a single file line on this side. And we can take individual photos. If family members want to come up and take photos with the student as well, we can do that at this time. So we'll have something to commemorate this event. <clears throat> First on our list is Am um Patel, Browning Pierce Elementary. <clears throat> Next up, from CL Overturf Sixth Grade Center, Caitlin Mulberry.
Children's Reading Center Charter School, Kendall Wilkinson. From B.H. E. Miller School, Aaron Exum. session. From Jenkins Middle School, Leandra Mulberry. From Kelly Smith Elementary, Jamarian Morris. Elementary, Miguel Flores. Got a smile, Miguel. From Palatka High School, Nastasha Young. I didn't say your middle name. From Pennell Baptist Academy, Zakaria Bush. Zachariah. Zachariah. I butcher at least one every time. <laughs> From Putnam Academy of Arts and Sciences, Hayden Duncan. Edge High School, Emily Anderson. And also from Mellon Elementary School, Azaria Jackson. people around the club. I always like to leave the students with one thing that I've learned in the third grade back at Mosley. And we started every day out in Miss Green's class with a very simple saying. It says, I am somebody. If my mind can't conceive it and my heart can believe it, I know I can achieve it because I am somebody. Each and every one of you standing here today, you're somebody. You're somebody destined for greatness. So just continue to do the things that you do, value education, listen to your family, listen to your parents, and continue to make wise choices, and greatness is upon you. Again, congratulations, and we're very proud of you. Okay. We're going to stand in recess. <laughs> we'll now call this meeting back to order. We will now move into public comment. Public comments are limited to 13 seconds. <laughs> public comments are limited to three minutes. No action will be taken on topics of discussion. Anyone here for public comment? We have a speaker card from Ask You Vickers. Please come forward, Mr. Vickers. Well, you, sir. Ask you, Vickers, 207 North 18th Street, Palatka, Florida. We had one good week last week that is something that will be remembered because all of you were invited to see President Obama. We were? Yeah. And that we're in the VIP section. Thanks to Nadia Garnett. Yes, sir. Palatka <laughs> High School graduate. Yes, yes. and my grand, my goddaughter. So I was there too. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got President. Did you take him any water? Uh, Did you take him any water? No. <laughs> no. I, I ain't crazy. 
But if you were trying to keep a lack of off the map like that. But uh, President Clinton was here and she called me to inform me that he's gonna be out there. So I was to shake hands and talk to him. So we had a good last week. Now we're gonna go to come here this week. I would like to commend the Chief Shaw and his police department on a job that's well done because I tried to <coughs> keep coming here as the chief. It was not good. So I appreciate the officers and what they have doing, what they are doing, what they hopefully continue to do. So that was one of the things I want to do. And with that, my time should be up. But I will be back next week to finish what I didn't do this week. <laughs> hey, thank you. That's a nice little warning. <laughs> you got a minute and a half left. <laughs> Today is a happy day. Is there anyone else here for public comment? Yes. <laughs> Seeing no one, we will close public comment on a happy note. It's always good to get. It's always good to get compliments. We we definitely appreciate Mr. Vickers uh, for his comments. Uh, this has been a very uh, powerful week in the city of Palaka. Um, and throughout this community. Moving on to the consent agenda, item three on the on the agenda is our consent agenda. One. Item A, adopt resolution number 2016-12-86, authorizing the city manager and city clerk to execute and attest a joint participation agreement with FDOT for the purchase of mobile avgas refueler for Palaka Municipal Airport in the amount of $15,000, 100% FDOT funded. B, authorized to exceed allowable noise levels and close certain streets to vehicular traffic for special events permit number 16-29, Christmas Parade, 11-25-2016, from 5 p.m. until 9 p.m., Downtown Palaka, Inc., Sam Deputy Applicant. C, authorized closure of certain streets to vehicular traffic for special events permit number 16-46, Trot for Hope, Two Mile Run, 11-24-16, from 6 a.m. until 11 a.m., Ray Smith Incorporated, Bill Hasselman, applicant. D, approve request items for special events permit number 16-49, Porch Fest, Palaka Music Festival, 12, 10, 16, from 1 p.m. until 5 p.m., South Historic Neighborhood Association applicant. Item one, grant permission to exceed allowable noise levels for amplified music on porches throughout the duration of event. Two, grant permission to sell alcoholic beverages and to allow for their consumption throughout the South Historic District throughout the duration of the event. Three, grant permission to close certain streets as noted on the site plan. <coughs> Are there any items on the consent agenda that you wish to have removed? <coughs> Item D. Are there any other items? Seeing none, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Motion to approve all items on the consent agenda, excluding item D. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries unanimously. Moving on to item 3D on the consent agenda. To approve request for special events permit number 16-49, Porch Fest Palatka Music Festival. Take it. Oh, I apologize. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. He'll take it. The city manager would take whatever questions or staff will help out with any questions that are available. Uh, Mr. Holmes, go ahead first. Commissioner Campbell mentioned to me that, uh, or pointed out that it appeared that they were looking to uh, sell or distribute the alcoholic beverages at the um, uh, facility that the city owned called Hammock Hall. Hammock Hall. And our Ordinance section 10.6 states that it's unlawful to consume alcoholic beverages uh, on any public or city-owned property except those that are specifically mentioned. 
and I just wanted to check to see if Hammock Hall is exempted, and it doesn't appear to be. The premises that are allowed are the golf car course, the Ravine Gardens, Riverfront Park, St. John River Center, Bronson Mulholland House, Price Mart Community Center, Larimer Arts Center, Tillman House, Chamber of Commerce Building, and Black and Municipal Airport. Um, but we don't, it does say at D though, the City Commission may grant special mm -hmm. permission for the sale, consumption, or possession of alcoholic beverages in open containers during special events within defined areas of any public park, recreation area, street, sidewalk, or public parking facility and for specific times. Um, technically, that still doesn't well, I think the, the original park. question, I think the original question, that was the discussion that we had, but the original request was to have it to where he would be able to, it would be something along the lines of consumed within that area that's designated, I mean, not designated, but in that whole blocked off area, correct? Yes, sir. And I think that's the original intent of what this, yeah. this was about, not to be consumed in that one area, but the re actual request was to have it to where it can be basically open to the, the whole to scope, that area, to the whole, the whole scope off, of the, the south area. Yeah, that's uh, the reason that it was pulled. Uh, let me make a few comments. Um, one is that <coughs> the um, alcohol consumption is part of the culture of music festivals. If we don't sell it, then we're not in control of any of it. But if we if we do if we do sell it, then basically we can make sure there's no glass bottles, as an example, and we can um, limit its area. But if we don't if we don't have any beer any uh, alcohol beer sales, then uh, people are going to bring it in. It's I think it's inevitable. I, I think there's a bigger question. Um, when I think about the consumption of alcohol, when I look at your application, your application indicated that there you expected 500 people. Your your testimony earlier indicated that you expected 2,000 people. Um, two different things come to question for me, um, and I think Chief Shaw would maybe better serve to deal with those questions. And the first question is the security aspect, based upon the recommendations for uh, law enforcement at this time. Um, with the information that was given during the on the application, what was the police department's recommendation for security? How many officers were you looking at for the event? Based on this application, uh, with the 500 individuals that he was expecting, uh, we posed, we had one volunteer and four officers to attend the event. We looked at a ratio from one to 100. Uh, I was alarmed when I uh, overheard that it was possible to be more because then it was gonna impact uh, the number of officers we had at the actual location. Uh, also, uh, looking at the map and where the uh, alcohol is going to be served, uh, that number of people in that area, we wouldn't be able to control uh, with people being able to roam the area with alcohol. So that it would be out of our control with the number of officers that was submitted or the application that was submitted and the number of officers that we agreed upon in this do you have any recommendations based upon what you've heard thus far as to how to uh, ensure any type of um, safe environment that would reach that would meet your concerns? Yes, my recommendation is that the alcohol be served in just one centralized location and remain in that area. It's easier for us to control as law enforcement, and then that way we, we, we won't face as many problems uh, with the crowd as we would face with alcohol being able to move around the whole neighborhood. Based upon the map that you've seen, is there any identifiable area that you that you think would be better served for security purposes? Well, I think question has been raised in reference to the area where it would be served from, um, in, in, in reference to whether it could be served there. But um, if that's answered, if it, it's allowable, I would say that, that that location would be fine. But if it's not allowable, then uh, I would ask to revisit the map and try to identify another location. Mm -hmm. There's a um, there's a vacant lot, I guess, adjacent to Hammock Hall. Um, that would that area be sufficient if there was a beer tent or something? Would that meet? The, would that suffice for the needs of what you're saying at that time? It's like a sitting room. It pro probably would would be within the spirit. It doesn't technically fall within the words because the words say within defined areas of any public park, recreation area, street, sidewalk, or public parking facility. But I don't know. There's a whole lot of difference from a practical perspective. 
between a street sidewalk and a vacant lot if mm -hmm. the city owns it. It right. might even be more practical. I will just mention one other thing, though, and I'm not just, this is a practical, not a legal uh, point, but if you really have 2,000 people, they're not going to drink with just one beer piece. Oh. And that's just fact of life. In four hours, it may happen. Nobody's arguing that. Well, but that's an issue for me when you say 2,000 beers and 2,000 people. I, it, I, just as a practical matter, I don't see that happening. No. Should there be, based upon that, just one second, hold on. Based upon that, um, should there be an increased recommendation for law enforcement? Looking at the number of people that expected, I would say we need to increase. We look at the same thing when we deal with Blue Crab, and we would look at the block surrounding and as well as the location that will be serving the alcohol. And that's how we would uh, disseminate our personnel. So I would say yes, there would be an increase of, of police officers. Based on it, but based on the information that you have today, are you equipped to do that now, or is that something that you'd have to do at a different time? I'm not, I'm not understanding. Am I would, would you be able to give uh, the number of law enforcement officers necessary to, 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 to basically meet your concerns at this time, or would you, no, or would you need more I'm time? No, I'm not understanding exactly how many people, at least a maximum number of people, we, we will be looking to expect. So there needs to be an additional meeting with Mr. Russo and, this, and the South Historic Neighborhoods. Now, now, my question being on what we voted on, that cost would not come under the CRA. Will it, will it be associated to wherever the other funds are coming to? Because we agreed to pay for law enforcement. All right. We did. And we capped it at 400, which was the 650. I'm, I'm sorry, we capped it at the four police officers which was the 650. So that, that cost would be capped where it, where it is. So if there are any additional costs, then they would be responsible for it. All right. In the, yeah. In the, in the prior meeting, the motion capped the cost. Okay. Um, Mr. Go One on. final question. Um, do you anticipate being able to cap your attendance mm. for purposes of planning? Is it possible that you can cap your attendance and guarantee that there won't be more than 2,000 people, for instance? <coughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not? You can't I, cap it? No, sir. Why, why would we want to cap it? Well, for planning purposes. If 5,000 people show up and you plan for 2,000 in, in law enforcement and booze, there may be an issue. Well, th that's where it comes into that we're in uncharted territory. Is it, I mean, how many people came to the first Blue Crab Festival? I mean, they, they couldn't tell us. So why do we? Why do you expect the SHNA to be able to accurately? I don't expect that I asked the okay, question. Okay, so first of all, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. From is him trying to get. We're trying to. We're trying to make things work. So as far as the back and forth with the, the what I'm sensing of hostility, that's not going to help the situation. Out. <laughs> what he's trying to say is, do you think you can cap it out? If you can't, that's fine. That's all we ask for. No, we're not sir. asking for you to come. If you can't do it, you can't do it. I, uh, no, I, the I, idea of capping it, it doesn't even occur to me. So what mechanism <coughs> could we use? I just couldn't tell you. I think that would have been a better response than what it was. But we wouldn't want to cap it. Why would we want to cap it? For public, one, one, one thing public you look at, and, and this is what you got to look at, there's a whole different side of this spectrum that you look at. And, and part of it, and one of the things that we're charged with looking at is, is public safety and welfare. Sure. And so when we look at those things, we got to make sure that one, there are certain controls in place to ensure that the public will be safe during this event and they will be free from anything that would be deemed to be foreseeable harm. So that's why that issue becomes pertinent. It's always, even though you may be zealous in trying to make sure that you maximize attendance, but for purposes and controls, one, you're not providing private security, one, you're providing law enforcement, the numbers that you provided are far different than what your estimated crowd is. Those things, all those things come into place when they look at ratios. All those things come into place when we, and, and it's intensified when you're talking about having alcohol at the event versus a non alcoholic event. Those things all trigger different activities and different. And different and different actions, Commissioner Commissioner Borum, you've been waiting patiently. Yeah, just I just want to make a recommendation. Oh, yeah. I, well, he said he I don't, don't he, he didn't have <laughs> a way to cap it. I think just, if you had yeah. like uh, some serialized armband, that'll mm -hmm. give you a good idea as to how many people have um, came into your room. <clears throat> And I, I think that would be a way, I'm just making a suggestion. Sure, sure. Not yeah. saying that that would be the answer, but that's just something to think about. Okay. So is there a, is there a um, obviously it would be great data to understand how many people actually come to the festival. 
that would be really good data. Now, you suggested a mechanism with which we could collect that data, but then we, we would have to cordon off in a, such a way that we funnel people through a certain entry point. And that way, then we could. Absolutely. So, That's my uh, but I would, um, <laughs> the, the concept of capping it just seems kind of counterproductive. Well, you're capping it, you're capping it, you're, the reason you're capping it for public health and safety, the, the chief just mentioned to you, he have to provide the necessary resources in order for public to keep, um, for, for public safety. Sure. And that's so right. that means that when you have a maximum capacity, okay. you cannot go over that. So okay. that, that's just my suggestion. That's fine. What would, how would we determine a maximum capacity? And, and I'm, 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 I, I'm open for a suggestion. Here's the man, do that. this is the man behind you who can determine that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Okay. The one thing I did want to mention is we permitted in the special events as a certain size festival. As soon as we hit a, a, an additional size, it changes the class. Mm -hmm. right. It changes classification. Okay. Thank you. And then we had to start putting, uh, I yes. think, at 2,500. There's required for the fire department to be present at, at, on site during, also during the event. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. So, uh, I mean, th there, there, there's no really life safety wise that says how many. What, what the occupant load of the area would be on during the outside event, but um, depending if you're occupying inside. Right. Um, I've got one speaker card, Ms. Kitchens, if you want to come forward at this I, time. I, I like I, one, one you point. can make it as soon as she makes her comments, and then you and I'll come back to you, but <laughs> we're going to let Ms. Kitchens go ahead and make her comments. I think we Kitchens, 1027 South 12th Street. Uh, I'm just going to make comments about the part that involves me. I do have some information that might be pertinent to what you all are talking about, but I'm interested in my issue and I don't want to waste my three minutes. Um, as far as the amplified noise, last year the porch fest was fine. They did it on the porches. They had amplified sound, but it didn't bother me. I'm probably 500 feet away as the crow flies. Amplified sound makes me extremely ill. It gives me migraine headaches. I am very concerned when I heard him talking about during drum corps marching around the neighborhood beating drums, high school bands, reggae and rock. I mean, we're talking massive, massive noise. And I don't think it's right that I was going to have to, from, from 12 to 5 p.m. on Saturday, I've got to go to a hotel or go find some place where I have to stay out of my home and be disturbed by this noise. So my deal, and I don't care on the porch fest, they can drink till they're blind, I don't care, they can play music, but I think you need to regulate the amplified sound. If you can hear it across the railroad track, which is where the hill area starts, then I think the police need to go in there and ask them to tone it down, and I would very much plead with you to put that, that uh, caveat on there. The, uh, one of the things on the map I saw, the amplified sound will be at Dr. Carillon's property. That's on the corner of Morris and River Street. I can throw a rock and practically hit his, that property from my backyard. And I'm very, very concerned about me being disturbed in my home and my neighbors who also like peace and quiet. We have new owners that are moving in next door to me. They said they like the peace and quiet. It's a young couple. They don't like amplified sound. They don't like boom boxes. They don't like dog barking dogs. They like it peaceful and quiet. And I'm very, very concerned. And if that music starts up and it disturbs me and I can hear it in my house and it's being cold weather, I can't even run my air conditioner probably, I'll probably call it in as a noise complaint and then I'll have to go somewhere probably with a migraine headache. And this concerns me. And you may think it's selfish, but if you've ever had migraine headaches or been sick, then you'll understand. I cannot take that noise, period. So I would ask you to please regulate the amplified sound. At least have the police just listen across the railroad track. And if they can hear it booming across the railroad track, then it's too dang loud for the, for the other neighborhoods. Because I didn't agree to this. I don't live in this neighborhood. I would fight it in court if it was coming into my neighborhood. I cannot stand it. It makes me sick. Thank you. Thank you. To address uh, Ms. Allegra's kitchen's concern, um, there's 18 porches and they're in close proximity to each other. So one of the things that we want to avoid is the, the musicians playing over each other. This is, this is not, I mean, this is a major issue. They have to keep it down in order to not play over each other. That would be a major issue. So okay. address it to the commission. Yes. Uh, and one, one other thing about the alcohol. Uh, we do have consent forms from all the porch owners, all 18 have signed a consent form conveying the idea that drinking beer in front of their home is not an issue. So just FYI. What about the, what about the liability aspect of injury at, we're keeping, at the homeowners? We, 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 the, um, <coughs> we're keeping the public off of the uh, front yards of these properties and they're going to be limited to the sidewalk and the easement between the sidewalk and the street and the street itself. And so, um, have you 
Have you contacted every homeowner within the geographical location of this festival? Uh, Thad Crow indicated that would happen two weeks prior right. to the event. Have you contacted as the president of the South Historic Neighborhood Association? Have you or any individual within your organization contacted the homeowners within your neighborhood within the, that, are, that are within that neighborhood and gotten uh, their blessings as it relates to this event? Every homeowner? No, sir. Uh, that's uh, what we, one of the things that we're doing to change the culture of the South Side is we're going to be assigning block captains to every block so that we have a, a liaison between the SHNA and any anyone who lives there, whether they're a renter or a homeowner. So that would be a mechanism we could use to do that, but we have just we have just become the president of the South Side, so we have whole new officers. We have how many are how many are opposing the event in your in your association? <clears throat> Zero. None of the Zero. none of the homeowners are opposing. Nobody's complained. Everybody's for it. Everyone. Okay. okay. Any other questions from the commission? Any other concerns from fire department or police department? Mr. Suggs, you have anything? Well, the only the, the only concern that I have is the city manager, and and first of all, uh, kudos uh, uh, to Mr. Russo for trying to put on uh, a, a very unique event in the uh, South Historic District. The concerns I have is what we've all been listening to here tonight, and, and Mr. Russo, I'm going to tell you now, I don't mean to hurt your feelings, no, no, okay? No, no, no. But but I'm listening to the scope of the event change. I'm listening to the magnitude of the attendees changing. Uh, we've sat through a special events meeting where coordination was, was set for X, and now we're hearing that it may not be X, that it may be Y, and we don't know what Y is. Uh, we're hearing that we've got uh, five or six police officers scheduled to work the event now if it grows to the, to the numbers that, that are being proposed there tonight. We don't have the staff, I don't believe, to, to handle that. Uh, it will, it would be very difficult. We would have to actually do both. Yes, sir. We, we could cover the event to a certain um, extent uh, just for, and I apologize, but just for his example of Blue Crab. Blue Crab mm -hmm. is, uh, the security for Blue Crab is covered by a police department, sheriff's office, and Blue Crab provides security. Mm -hmm. So the, the ratio number is covered totally different. Mm -hmm. So when we look at this event and the magnitude of this event, um, we would have to look at the number of people and number of officers we would be able to assign to the event and cover. Absolutely, that's my point. So my concern is, is, is not that we want to not uh, recognize this as, as a viable event, but what's the rush for December 10th? You know, and it sounds like maybe uh, we, we need to be looking at maybe moving the date or something else so we can get a better coordination of this because if it, if it trips those particular issues that the, that the uh, public safety has, then, then we're back to not being able to provide the coverage or, or the safety mechanism for the December 10th event. And the last thing that I want to happen, when, not only in our community, but for our elected officials and myself sitting up here tonight, is to get involved in an event that gets out of hand and we can't control and we can't handle it and we can't provide the, the staffing necessary to do the things that we need to do because it's not going to be the Southside Neighborhood Association who's getting the, the, uh, the phone calls, the emails, and, 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 and the concerns. It's going to be my five elected officials and us. And uh, so that's a concern that I have. And it's not that I don't want to see the event happen. I think it's a great idea. I just wonder if maybe we aren't rushing it just a bit. And that was my, that's my concern. Okay, so my question to you then is, what is the difference in regards to security of this event, whether it happens December 10th or January 10th or February 10th? Planning. What, planning, what absolutely planning. What planning can be done that can't be done between now and December 10th? You see the man behind you? Yes, sir. You meet, you meet with him, you, you, you could come up with a plan. My, my biggest concern is, is, is really um, parallel to what the city manager's concern is, um, safety is major. Yeah. And when you give the number from 500 to 2,000, that is a drastic difference. Um, there are several mechanisms that you can put in place that can determine um, from RSVP to, uh, you know, to, you know, to whatever communications you put out, which will at least give an idea of what you're going to have um, by way of communication, even setting up certain controls that they're familiar with based upon other events that they've been able to control attendance on. Um, you know, the idea, again, I, I think it's been echoed by everybody that sits up here that the no one has a problem with the idea of Porch Fest. 
what the issue is, it's the magnitude of planning that's been put in place to ensure that everything is done decent and in order, for lack of any other terminology, and under the rules that we have within the city, um, in compliance with everything, and also done so that it puts the public in a safe environment. And it also keeps all of us free from liability. Yeah. And so those are the things that I see, Commissioner Norwood. I think one other thing needs to happen as well is that the application needs to represent the flash of the event that it is. And we probably need to go back to the that as well. Just make sure that we cross all our across all our teams and battle our eyes. And I think also just for just for point of information, if the the demographics of the event changes, fees that was due to City Hall changes as well. That's right. So we have to take that in consideration as well. If we jump from 500 to 2,500, or to all of those fees that had to be paid for this to show up tonight, it's gonna have to all go back in and re be recalculated and the <coughs> correct fees would have to be submitted to City Hall. Yeah, and, uh, but we don't and know also, how many people will show up. Maybe 500 do, but still right, show and that's up. That's the issue. You're that, paying with, that's what you do. That, when, you, when you look at the different type of events that you have, it's capped off. So if, it, if you think that it was going to still exceed, the number that you said still exceeds the amount that the fee would have to be changed for the payment, <clears> if that makes sense. Well, I, hold on one, second. one of the things that, and I was asking about, uh, not attempting to say, convince you to cap your event, but planning is the question. For instance, one of the criteria that you see in determining what class event it is, is how you're publicizing the event, how you're soliciting attendees. Are you doing it outside the area or not? That is a factor that can be used in determining how many people you expect to attend. Yes, sir. Are you, are you advertising it outside the area? Well, we haven't done any advertising at this point. Do you plan on it? I saw in your breakdown of fees, it appeared to me as though you were sending out 500 uh, emails or Hold postcards. We got, we got loud we, music we, going we on. We have about 200 posters. Check the decimals on that. <laughs> 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 she, she might be getting sick. <laughs> Uh, hey, we needed a laugh uh, right there. Make sure you tell them when she comes back. You're checking the I got, I got a headache. <laughs> okay, okay. You got a headache? Who said that? <laughs> so, um, uh, well, we were just going to do social media and posters in town, and and, and the little four by six postcards. I uh, am. Yeah. So. Um, we could have five hundred. Okay. I think we, from the conversation that we've had as of now, um, and I think we all can come to the conclusion that another meeting needs to happen. Once again, I would like to echo that I'm one of the main people that's for it. I'm, I'm an arts person. <coughs> but again, taking into consideration, we want to make sure that everybody involved is safe. That's from the individuals that's coming from outside of this community, the ones that will remain in this community when those that are from the outside come in. I mean, leave. We want to make sure that everyone is safe. So I think the most important thing to do is take the come take what was said not only in this meeting but the meeting prior to have a meeting and let's execute it and let's make it happen. And, and if the plan is to have this event be a mainstay and be something that happens annually, then you want it to go off without a glitch Absolutely. because all it takes is one event and this thing never comes back again and people won't return. And so. I, 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 hope I agree with the sentiments that have been given today. I will, well, at this point. I'm willing to consent to 500, and we'll just, we'll just funnel them through, and we'll just give them numbers, and we'll see, leave it to 500. Okay. Um, at this time, if there's no more um, communication or questions or discussion from the commission, I will entertain a motion. No, no, no. Commissioner Noah would want to say something. I said if there is. <laughs> Go ahead. Mr. Mayor, I just believe that we need to table this until the proper planning can be done, the right application, and the right, right, uh, the right class of the event is identified so that we can keep the general public and the neighborhood safe. Is there a date, sir? Uh, 
it's the meeting, it's not until the 12th. That's, 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 that's a month. If you can't plan within a month to get a meeting implemented or something, we've had meetings where we had to come together the next couple of days. So this is the fire. If you want it to happen, it's going to happen by the, within 30 days. So. We want to have it on the agenda. He, he want to hold his event. We're voting. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're voting on his event. This is we're, for his event here. We're, so. And the event is on the 10th. On the yes, 10th sir, of Bob December. Man. December 10th. Saturday, Saturday December 10th. Uh, November and December are the best months because it'll be nice and cool. And it's also the driest months yes, of the I, year. I think the commission is at deliberation right now. So yeah. I think uh, we, we could probably come back in the next week or the next couple of weeks in order to uh, have a special meeting to address this particular issue. Um, and I don't know what the uh, city schedule is for the next couple of weeks. It could be tight. Well, we need yeah. to have some deliverables. That's what I'm saying. Right. But it gives everybody an opportunity to come together and try to reconcile and, and uh, this event to, and put it and, and make sure that we've got uh, got all the right components to it. So you're making a motion to table. I think we need because I'm rather than to deny. Right, we're not. I think, not. I think we need to table it because I, I think everybody up here has expressed that they want the event to happen. Yes. You know. Uh, so I think this, the best thing to do is to is to table it. Uh, to a time, so a date. Time, and so trying to and try to find a date. Right. Try, try to find a date to, uh, within the next couple of weeks. Is that a motion? Yes, sir. A second. It's a motion and a second by Commissioner Borum. Any further discussion? Question. Questions called. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed motion carries unanimously. I want to say one thing before I leave, and I just want to say thank you to all of the commissioners and the mayor for giving me the time to uh, make my argument and give that presentation. Right. See, that's the thing. You don't have to argue. Um, <laughs> Well, it, we, I, 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 it's a presentation, but this this is the thing. the The purpose of these the, the purpose of these presentations for fact finding, and at the end of the day, I think you've received the consensus that there is that the commission is in favor, just mm -hmm. as the agency is in favor of this event. the The issue is the detail in which you plan the event. So that's something that you have, you have to think about in doing so to make sure that you satisfy the, the concerns of everyone who has to make the decisions and so but we definitely appreciate you for stepping out of the box mm -hmm. um and taking uh taking the time to come forward and to try to do something um innovative Mr. Mayor, and i also would recommend that he pull the minutes uh so that he can hear all of our concerns so that all of those concerns are addressed yes sir and get with the, and get with the various entities to make sure that you meet their concerns. I would get with the chief and the, and the fire marshal as well as Mr. Crow and the city manager to make sure that you meet the concerns of all concerned. And maybe you guys can set up a meeting where you get together and actually address all those things at, at one time. Um, and does so, um, does okay. the schedule permit Saturday does this process to be completed by Saturday, December 10th? The, the schedule mm -hmm. permits for you to get with Ms. Driggers <coughs> after you've gotten with everybody else that met those concerns and try to get our calendars to, court, to, to be coordinated. Yes, sir. Okay. And so we'll, we'll do everything we can to get you back up before your event. But I, I can tell you, for it's, it's going to be hard, so they may be doing it without me because my schedule is crazy. Yes, I can. So, um, but thank you again. We will now move this agenda. We're to item number four. And we're in public hearing. It's an ordinance amending Palak Municipal Code, section seeing no one. We will close public hearing. Is there any further discussion from the commission? Questions, Questions call. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Aye. Motion, motion is approved three to two. Moving the agenda to item number five, setting the December meeting schedule.
or move it to the Thursday after the um, that, which would be the 15th. So it's the 12th and the 15th. You've got calendars <coughs> in your packages. You can see what else is scheduled, and December is coming fast. Hey, if you're already here, you'll only be here one time. I'm 12. I'm I'm in favor of 12. Is that a motion? I second. Yeah. <laughs> was that in the form of a motion? Because there was an urgent need to discuss. Hold on, Commissioner Norwell has more discussion. Yeah, but I, I know that the it, legislative conference is going to be the eighth and the ninth, and I think is it, I think it needs to be instead of me attending that. I think that I like to deal with, and I don't know what the city charter says concerning it. No, that Miss Tammy Williams <clears throat> is allowed to attend that conference so that she can get her feet on the ground. We had talked about scheduling her for that. Okay. And and that's fine. She's a an incoming. Yeah. Okay. Thank so, you. And as of right now, she's <laughs> she's a commissioner elect. Right. Mm -hmm. I think that was the same thing with me where like this one. Yeah. We had opportunity to go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And definitely again, thank you again, Commissioner Norwood. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Um, any is there a motion for the file it for the twelfth? I'll make a motion to have December twelfth at uh meeting. second. There's a motion and second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed motion carries unanimously. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to city managers and administrative reports. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, got the um, uh, election results and uh, city clerk, Ms. Betsy Driggers, will hand those out. These are hot off the press. I checked just prior to printing all of this, and the, the totals have not changed um, yep. as far as the elections office have gone. Sure. Most of you may have heard yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Betsy Dreger, City Clerk. Most of you may have heard that they have located some extra ballots. How many? Um, four, 428. 428 ballots. We don't know what precincts they cover. Some of them could be city precincts, but there are not enough of them that are going to change the ratio aspect much. Um, the shortest vote spread was between Commissioner Norwood and Commissioner-elect Williams, which is around 600 votes. So even if all of them were in the city, they also, Williams... They also have provisional ballots as they well, They have right? 78 provisional ballots, which should be... Which one? 23 are, are good. Okay, 23 good provisional wow. ballots. So that's wow. not going to change the wow. totals much either way. We don't know if they're in the city or in the county. So these are just preliminary results is all this is. Okay. The election will be, um, like he said, the provisional ballots were scheduled to be counted today. They actually had um, a sheriff's race recount, which they started this morning. I um, spoke with someone from the county who said that I think they're still going, still going, and we'll be going probably through the night on that. Uh, because what ended up, <laughs> it ended up as, um, I believe it was an 18 vote um, favor to one candidate. And then once they uncovered the, the ballots, there was an eight vote advantage to the other candidate. So, um, but this is the preliminary results and it is apparent that um, Ms. Tammy Williams is um, elected commissioner. She'll take her seat on January the 9th. Uh, Mary Lassa Brown is to be congratulated for being reelected, as well as Ms. Williams. And she will also um, be sworn into her new, new term on January the 9th. Um, the election will be certified on November the 18th, and we will have final ballot results then. She can almost swear herself in now, right? Yeah. She's, she can do it by herself now. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I know how much y'all love <laughs> And including in your package is the schedule. The only meeting that has not been held yet is the Canvas the Overseas Ballots and Final Certification and Post-Election Audit, which is going to be held November the 18th at 1.30 p.m. It's open to the public. And, and, and while, we're, while we're on that, um, one of the things that um, I want us to think about in the near future um, is the amount of time that elapses from the time that um, we have our elections until the time the indiv individuals are sworn in. Yes. Um, we've, we have the longest lag out of anybody in this county. 
Um, I think Crescent City swears their, swears their commissioners in the following week. The, the school district, and everyone usually does it within about two weeks. And so we find ourselves with an extensive gap. Um, and the reason for that is that we used to hold our primary election in November and our general election in December when we were on um, odd years. And then when we um, moved our elections over to tag them on with the city, county, and state, of, or county, state, and federal, we're now in a general election in November. So therefore, there's the lag. We used to do it in a month. Yeah. So we, we just yeah. need to look at we need to look at changing it. I, I think we are just. Uh, I think we can do it by, by ordinance as ordinance. opposed as opposed to going back and having a a, a change by by, rep, by charter and have a referendum. You can do, you can pass an ordinance to um, provide for the um, orderly transition of of terms. No, I was just saying we don't have to. What's, what's the like? What can we do to try to expedite it? I mean, I don't see the point. What's the point of dragging something out of that? It's, if it's housekeeping, That's um, not, it's not. It's not well, housekeeping. I'm just saying. Well, if yeah. we, something that we want to do, what will be the the proper protocol to get it done? We can we can actually draft an ordinance that does it. But I, I think for this year, we keep it as it is, and for future consideration, we look at it. Mm -hmm. When is emo? Uh, end of January. January. Yeah, it's in January. January. So, I haven't looked at the dates. And, and so I, I and so I, I think emo comes up fairly early in the process anyway. But uh, it creates a situation where we don't have this extensive gap. As it relates to certain issues that come up, because if you remember, if you, if you remember, we came in like right in the middle of a contested issue um, last year, and I think it's all. Sometimes it's unfair to both the individuals leaving and the individuals coming in to have to come in the middle of certain and, and certain things. So um, that's just kind of the thought process. Um, moving it up a month. Moving it up, maybe moving up a month or so um, to the December meeting. Um, and then that way we get rid of at least some of the lag that goes in between and we can work on speeding up the transition process. Mr. Mayor, I, I certainly agree with you, but it sure will make me feel like y'all were going to leave us. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's why we said last year. We're not saying now. That's why we said next year. <laughs> so let's all get carried away. So, in an off year. <laughs> so. At least we can laugh around here. <laughs> I'd like to tell Jenny that I've enjoyed working with you all these years. What is it, 17, 18 years? We've been sitting up here kicking the cat together. And um, I never heard that. Yep. I never heard that one before. Miss Miss Kitchen even had down, to look at that one. Down the road to kick the cat, it don't matter. But it matters to the cat. <laughs> I don't kick him hard. <laughs> so. Mm. I feel it'll send a message with it. We will, we will definitely, um, we will definitely have more to say in the next few minutes. Um, item B, approval of deferral requests. <clears throat> yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. Uh, commissioners, as you remember, we passed a resolution that would allow for deferments and hardships for the 2015-16 fire assessment year. Uh, we need to go ahead and bring those forward for your approval tonight so we can get the, uh, or whatever cert uh, cert certificates of corrections completed. Uh, we had 23 applications uh, given out this year for uh, deferment hardships. Of those 23, nine actually met the, uh, uh, the criteria to uh, be granted the deferral. Uh, in your package, you have the parcel numbers uh, of those nine. Uh, so uh, uh, the other 16, uh, five of them did not meet the recommendations or did not turn paperwork in and seven when they realized what the rec uh, what the requirements were went ahead and paid their fire assessment fees yeah we got a motion on the floor second there's a second any discussion question questions called all in favor say aye aye opposed motion carries unanimously item c employee commendation yeah it was uh if you don't mind mr mayor i received a a, a letter uh from uh mr eddie collins who resides at, uh, on South 15th Street. Uh, just wanted to uh, draft a handwritten letter, which I, I, I take a lot of pride in when they do that, uh, commending uh, Betsy Driggers for assisting during the, uh, uh, with Florida Power and Light, uh, getting some debris uh, uh, taken care of, and Jonathan Griffith. Is Jonathan here? So, um, uh, yeah. 
but uh, for getting out there and, and I want to just one part of the letter says that uh, uh, they once the cleanup was done they had he's lived there for 23 years on that street and says this block looks the best it has ever looked you know in his time here so uh, again appreciation for staff uh, those are the things that we strive for every day and uh, you know, when we get these type of letters I think it's uh, uh, it's important to share not only with the commissioners but with the staff especially in a public meeting uh, kudos to both uh, public works director Jonathan Griffith and our city clerk Ms. Betsy Driggers for a job well done thank you both oh. I believe that concludes me Mr. Mayor sure I think so sir um, one item that we skipped earlier I want to go back to it and allow Mr. Holmes to make comments it was during our the acceptance of a donation of real property is a discussion item for this commission. Um, it was item 1D under our recognition. Uh, Mr. Holmes, can you address that for us? Certainly. I was contacted by a local attorney who indicated that he was a trustee of a trust and that uh, it appeared the trust that wished to donate property to the city of Palatka. Um, the property is the property that uh, is adjacent to the golf course. Uh, I think it would be on the south side, southeast corner of the golf course off of Lundy Road. It was previously the subject of an application for condominium uh, approval, zoning change, which uh, some of you remember. Mm -hmm. um, uh, before moving forward, uh, of course, I wanted uh, direction from the commission as to whether the commission wished me to, to, to pursue that. The only condition is that there's not going to be a string there would not be a string attached to use or anything of that nature uh, they are looking to receive a tax deduction for a, uh, a state uh, tax issue I've been involved in those before essentially the city or governmental entity just there would be an appraisal and the governmental entity would simply have to express that they took no exception or objection to the appraisal it would be a certified appraisal uh, from a certified appraiser um, and then the property would be the city's. So uh, before uh, moving forward to do anything along those lines, uh, I needed the guidance from the commission whether the commission wanted to, uh, wanted to accept that property if the uh, donor is still willing to go with it. So will the commission. That, that was the back end of the golf course. Mm -hmm. I would make a motion that we accept the property back because it was uh, belonged to the city. I think you sold it to him or did something. No, for this property, I don't believe we've ever owned no, this property. No, no. Uh, I don't want to tell the you the wrong T. Okay. I think it's uh, 12 or 13. Acres? Uh, it was 12 or 13. I think it was about 13 acres. Um, right. yeah. it was a whole 13. Whole 13. Whole 13. Yeah. 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 But uh, what is the value of that? We don't need a, we, it's not an action item. Oh. So we don't need a we don't need a motion on it. It's a discussion item. Um and um and it was a piece of property that was looked at for doing some um upscale housing mm -hmm. um a few years back. And so um if it's the cons if it's the will of the commission, um uh, we can um Give Mr. Holmes our direction to move mm -hmm. forward um, with that. I, I think once the verified appraisal comes in, it has to come back for approval from the commission anyway. Mm -hmm. So I think one thing the city has to ask itself as well: Can they maintain the property? Uh, <coughs> we do struggle with maintaining mm -hmm. our property. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, it's, it's, adja it's adjacent to the golf course. I'm right. hoping we can. I got, I got another question. Uh, how much? It, well, we also need to consider how much. It, <laughs> hold on, hold on, one at a time, please. I just also think we need to uh, look at the value of that property too, Esther. It's free. Well, <laughs> That's well, probably no, the no, best value. Well, how, 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 how much tax base are we going to It's lose free and it? it's near the golf course. I understand. It's adjacent to the golf course. And yeah, it's yeah. a property yeah. that has been up for discussion for development. <laughs> so I think it's a no-brainer <laughs> on my side. It's it's a no -brainer. Brainer. Absolutely. I you know, already received yeah, development yeah. approval. I don't know if it's still valid or not, but it already received approval. Hey, Mr. Hey, Mr. Holmes, I might have one more <coughs> item to briefly discuss with the commission. Yeah, tonight as well. Mr. Holmes, go ahead and move forward. Is that we can entertain? Yeah, we can entertain. Okay. <coughs> move forward. Thank you. Is that, is that the will of the commission, Mr. Holmes? Yes. There you go, Mr. Holmes. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Uh, City Manager. Yes, sir. Uh, your last, last item. My last, last item. Uh, Mr. Holmes and I were, were discussing it uh, yesterday. Uh, there's a foreclosed piece of property that we need to uh, kind of get some guidance uh, from our city commission tonight. 
uh, due to the fact that it's a uh, short turnaround. Uh, there's a piece of property that's up for foreclosure. Uh, Mr. Holmes uh, has have, have briefed me on it. I believe there's about uh, $5,000 owed in taxes, which you know we, we need to we be uh, uh, understanding of. And also, if we wanted to do anything with the house or anything on the property, I think Mr. Holmes and I thought it would be about seven thousand dollars to do anything with the property itself if we wanted to raise the house and make it a vacant lot uh, so we're looking at the possibility of about twelve thousand dollars or so mr holmes i would i would say so it's 1902 gillis street 1902 gillis about a one acre lot i've already actually uh, completed the foreclosure proceeding to the point of getting a judgment in favor of the city in excess of forty thousand dollars the property will go up for foreclosure sale uh, December 8th, I believe it is. Um, on that date, we can bid in. This is a scenario of the type that you know we, we are going to discuss at a workshop. Uh, we can bid in up to $40,000 to buy the property. Obviously, I, I don't think you want to bid in a full 40, but uh, we need to bid in some amount if you want it. If you don't want it and somebody shows up, I can let it go for whatever they bid. Mm -hmm. If you do end up with it, there's about 5,000 delinquent taxes on it, and there's a dilapidated structure that will probably just need to be torn down. Uh, it would, you would end up with about a one acre lot at 1902 Gillis. If, uh, if you, non, about a one acre lot that you don't free and clear <coughs> if you wanted to spend that money. But this is one of those, this is one of the, of the issues that we highlighted in the memo and that you're gonna discuss at the workshop. We foreclosed on it now. I've got the foreclosure judgment. What are we gonna do with it? So we want to know if there's if there's a uh, limitation based you know uh, on, on a cap that you might want us to enter into. I think for the purposes of the auction, we don't really want to reveal the cap. So only what we do is we have a certain number of costs that we feel yeah. like we've already incurred. Right. Um, you got forty thousand in fines, plus or minus maybe about thirty five actually, and the rest were costs and fees that we were able to credit the city with, but you know, you probably would be able to recover your actual costs if you ended up with five or $6,000 out of it. If you didn't have to do anything more with it, it's just going down the road, you got a filing fee in it, you got some administrative costs from the codes department, um, and of course you got the, not an attorney's fee, but cost of service or process and that sort of thing. You probably have five or $6,000 out of pocket in it, you know, under 10 for sure. Uh, so if you so normally what I would do is I would contact the city manager and say you know we don't really want to own property unless you want to own property and if you don't want to own property I would say he would say bid up to an amount that will recover our costs and then if somebody else wants it and they want to fix it up and put it back on the tax rolls let them go with it. Okay. Not many one acre lots in the city. When does it go on the tax? So, when does, when does it go to all, yeah. all? December 6th I believe it is uh, oh. Commissioner Norwood. Six or eight. Is that for anybody to get them just to see? Mm -hmm. Anybody, anybody can go bid. You know, anybody can go bid. Okay. I, oh no, I'm, I don't. I, I don't I, want it. <laughs> I, there aren't there aren't many one acre lots in the city, so that may be a valuable piece of property. So I think this may be one opportunity that we look at actually owning property in the city. Um, so that's my thought. Um, you know, especially if we're looking at doing some housing. Uh, if we're looking at affordable housing initiatives, things of that nature through federal home loan um, programs, um, we recently uh, got a new partner in place instead of a mayor's if, they're, if we look at reapplying. Um, so there's an opportunity for, you know, for us to kind of be forward thinking at, at a very nominal cost if no one comes in and bids. Yeah. And well, so even if they do, you got If they 40, do, we got it to 40000 basically to retain our costs. Yep. So. so my suggestion is that we look at retaining this property and you know if we need to sell at a later date we can always come back to the table any thoughts concerns do we need to take this as an emergency item yes so we can do it i think sooner or later that we're going to have to do some of that and i'd like to see some of the folks that work for the city get in the homes and maybe this is the way that we can Okay. have some lots that would be available to help them a little bit in okay. what they do and get back some of our costs. Okay. For the purposes of what we're doing, um, I'll entertain a motion to take this as a merchant. Uh, I move the motion that we take this as a merchant.
Second. There's a motion a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries unanimously. Is there any other motion as to, we continue discussion at this point, or is there a motion at this time as to what the will of the commission is for this particular property? A little bit of information, extra information. It's on the, on the tax rolls assessed at about 46, as I recall. But as I indicated, that, in my opinion, is an inflated assessment because the, uh, the structure on site is, uh, is probably not going to be reparable. It's probably going to be mm -hmm. demolished. So be looking at the I got a question to that, Terry. Is there any way that we can actually give you a range? Sure. Can we a range? Where it's not public. <laughs> not today. <laughs> not legally. And this is the thing. And the, and the other part is this. Uh, if you get to the auction, if we make the decision that we want to hold on to the property and we later decide that we don't want to, you can still contact the individual that was bidding and, and say, hey, we're interested in selling that property. Well, what you can do is just give the city manager discretion to serve them out. And then if you get, if he if he comes up with the wrong amount, you can get mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, or we can do the city attorney. <laughs> or we can do what I said the first time. <laughs> Give me so, a number. <laughs> so um, for the sake of it's almost seven o'clock in Alabama. Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock in Alabama. Well, if we're looking to retain the property, I think that we ought to not. We ought to be uh, not more. I would say not more than uh, $20,000. So the person that comes with $20,001 just yeah. bought it. We, we don't uh, want to just so see. And that, that's my point. You know, no matter what, no matter what number we give, they can, it's a plus one. And mm -hmm. they only litigation and settlement. I don't just said litigation. Okay. So we need it's going to be published. Well, I mean, I'm talking yeah. about what we so what we decide to do so right let's, now. Let's make a decision and move forward at John this point. Over here to say twenty thousand and one. I will entertain. I would entertain. Is that a motion, Commissioner yes, Norwood? Yes, sir. There's a motion to cap it. To cap our bid at twenty thousand dollars. Is there a second? Hearing no second. Is there a second? Last I, I, call. I, I, we need to move on. I second. All right, there's a motion and second on the floor. Is there any further discussion? Yes. All right, yeah. If we cap that number, if we cap it at $20,000, you said we got about five to $7,000 in real cost. Five to seven, 5,000 in taxes and another five to six in demo. <coughs> So you probably got somewhere around 10 to 12 mm -hmm. in real cost. And that property is a couple blocks behind the Palak Daily News? 1902 Gillis. I honestly can't tell you uh, exactly where that is. 1902 Gillis. Yeah, exactly. I'm sorry? A couple of blocks behind Papa John. Right. Yeah. Right, behind, right, yeah, right behind the Palak Daily News. So, so <laughs> yep. If, if we, the city probably owns buy some property behind the newspaper. So, <laughs> so, so, there's any any further discussion? Questions? Questions? Call. All in favor, say aye. Nay. Nay. Oh, opposed. Oh, oh, nay. Opposed. Say nay. 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 Motion Sorry. fails. Is there a second motion? <laughs> <laughs> I'll entertain a motion. I will entertain a motion for us to retain the to give the to give the city manager discretion to bid. <clears throat> the motion on the floor. In a second. Any discussion? Question. Questions called. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Like sign? Motion carries unanimously, sounds like. Slow unanimously, but unanimously. The only dissension I heard on that last motion was from Commissioner Borum. What? What did no, you hear? No, he didn't say. No. What did? We have to mean. I, I said no. I said no. Okay, so three no's. Yeah. He just said his loudly. 
Okay. He said it early. Yeah. I like to, I like to right. be on time number four. Now that we've taken that action, um, sorry. we'll move on to Chief Shaw. Any comments? Yes, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought you were going to say no. Mm -mm, can't. Not on this one. A couple of things I'd like to report on, on, on this past month. Uh, last time we met, I uh, announced to the commission that we had uh, the fall festival. Uh, fall <coughs> festival was a uh, tremendous success. We did receive a number of, of uh, thank yous and uh, great jobs from the citizens in reference to uh, what we did with Black Pride and uh, the things that we provided at the park for the citizens. Uh, Captain Williams was in charge of, of the fall festival and I'd like to extend the great job to Captain Williams on that event. Um, after the fall festival, the following Monday, we had Trunk or Treat uh, at the mall. Trunk or Treat was put on by Captain Foresight and during Trunk or Treat, we anticipated a couple hundred um, in the event we got several thousand. Um, <laughs> the class of your event changed. <laughs> Trunk or Treat was a huge success. Uh, we've gotten um, requests to assist and participate from a number of different organizations in the community. Uh, we'll be looking to uh, hold that event again next year. Um, and again, I'd like to give a uh, great job and, uh, for Captain Forsythe and putting on that event. Uh, last but not least, I, I brought uh, to the commission in reference to our accreditation. Uh, on the accreditation was being held uh, November 1st to 3rd of uh, this month. Uh, on the 3rd, uh, the outgoing interview was given uh, before the mayor and the city manager for the police department. And the police department received accolades in the tremendous ground it's covered since uh, last going through the assessment. Uh, they praised all the officers uh, within the department on uh, what they, the changes that were made and the morale within the department that has, uh, was one of the, the noticeable differences. Uh, and I'd like to give all the officers uh, credit for um, uh, doing such a tremendous job. But uh, most importantly, I'd like to thank Megan Warner, our accreditation manager, and Captain Newcomb, uh, who was Megan's supervisor, uh, making sure that, that the job was seen forward. During the outgoing interview, we received uh, the recommendation to be reaccredited. And we will be going in February to the uh, conference to receive our certificate. That's all I have to report. Before you leave, um, <clears throat> sitting in that room, listening to the comments mm -hmm. of the assessors, it let us know that we made the right choice. Watching watching uh, everyone at the police department from the days prior um, with the community activities, um, the level of engagement, mm -hmm. the faces on those children, uh, the faces on Commissioner Borum as he was handing out candy <laughs> wrongfully. Um, <laughs> that's what we look for. Um, Officer Forsyth is sitting back, Captain Forsyth sitting back in the back of that room. I commend you guys. I commend you for the change that we see in that department, the engagement in the community, um, the way you work with other agencies as well. And I mean, the relationship between our police department and fire department is second to none. Yeah. And you guys work side by side, your position side by side, but there's a cohesiveness that I haven't seen around here ever. And we thank, we thank you all for the work that you do and we salute you. Thank you. Absolutely. <clears throat> Spire Marshal, top that. The <laughs> only one that can top that is you, sir. <laughs> I, I can't touch it. <laughs> Captain Forsyth, you got anything today? No, sir. Ms. Robinson. Now we're gonna have you come up for so you can say that for everyone to hear it on TV. And ask for how many pages it is. Ask for how long it is. <laughs> so <much> just <laughs> State your name for the record. Deborah Robinson, Human Resources. 
I'm on the first edit of the personnel policy and procedure manual that was updated in uh, March how, of 1986. How, <laughs> how many pages in the old manual? Um, 50. How many pages in your first version? 114. <laughs> well, needless to say, Ms. Robinson's come in. She has definitely come in running. She's off and running. We're looking for great things from you. Um, and we will, you know, we're definitely um, looking forward to the changes. 114 page strong. Okay. Uh, thank you. Anything else? That's it. Mr. Griffiths in the back hiding. Do you have anything for us today? That's Come on up here. We got you got some news for us. I don't know what news I have for you. You just you took a little ride the other day. Can you not find the green shirt? <laughs> I don't like my green shirt. There was there was a ride on Saturday. Tell us about that. Uh, yes, sir. We took a ride um, on the Palaka Pride Number Two. Uh, it was certified Friday afternoon by the U.S. Coast Guard. Um, so that's great news. Um, it is ready for operation. So we're looking forward to seeing an agreement from Palaka Boathouse Marina very soon. Awesome. Well, uh, good job. All I was going to say is we have one open position right now. So if you know anybody with a Class B uh, driver's license, it's an equipment operator slash driver for the sanitation department. Okay. Cool. Good plug. Uh, Mr. Yule still in here? <laughs> uh, Mr. Yule in? Uh, where is Mr. Driggers? Got anything? Mr. Holmes? Nothing. Mr. Suggs? No, I think it's it's been covered, but I do want to say how proud I am of Chief Shaw and his staff for uh, for working through that. That is that's a tremendous accomplishment in a short time, 11 months. Congratulations, sir. And then to Ms. Robinson for hitting the ground running, like you said. A long time needed, and you're doing a great job. Thank you. You're at three months. He set the bar high. You got eight more months to try to catch him. <laughs> Commissioner Campbell. Uh, yes. Um, I'm, I'm just excited about what I'm seeing going on in that city. Um, all the way around, the morale of the city is slowly changing. And I think it's because we have individuals that are now buying into the vision because they see people who are at the head actually lending a hand back and actually being some of the forefront um, and hands on the ground, um, along with our different staff and our different department heads. I'm just excited. And the news that we just got with the accreditation, that just really likes it, my excitement through the roof. Um, that is just all good. Um, even though I didn't get the ride on uh, Pride of Palaka number two, I pride myself in being able to help dock it by pulling, <laughs> <laughs> by pulling um, on the rope. So um, I'm excited about it as well. Um, I did post it on social media, and we got a lot of positive feedback for it. And a lot of people can't wait to hop on it. Um, and like you said, I'm just, I'm just excited about what we're seeing in our city, and I know the best is yet to come. Okay. Commissioner Boer. Well, um, 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 I echo the same sentiments, um, Commissioner Campbell. With, but we, you know, we got the boat. The accreditation was a big piece. I mean, uh, Chief Shaw, he got in there. He uh, did uh, just a magnificent job with uh, with the staff. Uh, changed the morale, um, and uh, you see the major accomplishments that we're making as it relates to that. Again, the. Uh, the partnership with also the uh, fire, de fire department, working uh, hand in hand in all of these different events. I mean, it's, it's just uh, overall the, the city culture is changing as a whole, uh, w w even with Jonathan in his new role, and as as well as um, Betsy and her uh, in her, the work that she does. Uh, it just it just goes to show that the um the, the staff is buying into the vision and i uh, certainly appreciate all everybody's doing and thank you terry for the wonderful job that you're doing as well thank you so, um, that's pretty much all right newly elected commissioner 
Mary Lawson Brown, Vice Mayor. Reelected. Like newly <laughs> elected. Only for going into year 33. Refresh. Well, I would like for y'all to get in here because we got one boat. I hope the other boat will be here soon. Um, we need to um, get the contract signed as quick as possible. And I need to ask the city manager to come to when Congress is, is in recess because. The Congress people that helped us get the money for the boat said that they would like to, to be here for the kickoff. And we, uh, I am planning a big kickoff so y'all can find some money. I'm telling y'all ahead of time. I don't find the money for the boat. Y'all find the money for the rest of the thing. Um, people are anxious to, to know when it when it will start and how much it will cost. So uh, I'd like to say this to some of those people who <coughs> talk about the city taking on responsibility. The boat will be... Is it rented or leased? Uh, what do you call it? Lease or rent? Let's get the operator first. <laughs> well, I mean, we put up, we had a RFP go out for somebody and they accepted it, but that person will be operating it at their expense. And it won't cost the city a thing but getting in there to get it going and, um, and, get, and making it work. And my legal city people, I've, uh, the people so much to help find the money and stuff that they call me the boat lady when I go to meetings. I have a meeting coming up with the, le the, the legislative meeting, so I'll be able to really say that we, are, we have the boat now. And I want to thank you all. It's only been about 20 some years getting here, but it's here. The lady with more energy than anybody sitting up here. So, I was going to, I asked and, them about, let me see, my driver's license had to be, mm -hmm. the thing on my driver's license. So, license. we just admire, we, we admire your enthusiasm <laughs> and your energy, <laughs> um, and we're glad to have you back. <laughs> Commissioner Norwood. Mr. Mayor, uh, first of all, let me say congratulations to the police department. I've gone through accreditations at my employment, and... That's a huge undertaking, and you guys are to be commended because I know all the all the SOPs and all the procedures and policies that you gotta have in place, and the checks, data checks that you gotta have, and the timeliness of reporting that has to be done as well. So um, that really speaks volumes uh, for, for for your for you all's undertaking. Uh, but also want to uh, ask the the city manager as well is to make sure, if you would, that we have a plan in place to maintain the assets that we have for its maintenance goals on the assets we have on the riverfront in the 100 block. We just need uh, that is really important. Uh, where we don't we don't need to see weeds and all those kind of things growing up around those that those buildings and that kind of thing. As well, uh, and I understand that, and I know with the hurricanes, we probably got uh, sidetracked, and, and when we'll, we'll say sidetracked, got busy doing other things, and we do understand that, but we just want to make sure that those assets uh, maintain the, uh, to the decorum that they should be. Um, but also, uh, I want to correct, congratulate, and I let me first of all apologize to Ms. Tammy Williams uh, that I didn't give you a call. On Aww. Tuesday night, uh, I just didn't have your phone number. That's <laughs> really I could do that. But I also want to congratulate you, you. Uh, on your election as well. And my prayer is that God be with you. And, well, you're and, and, going all the way. <laughs> so, but uh, and and I also like to say thank you to the citizens of Palak for the time that I, that you've given me to give uh, leadership to this city. Uh, I really have enjoyed. Uh, I think every, all of us have a season. I think my season's over with as far as uh, my season has been put on hold, all is over with as far as serving as a commissioner uh, here in the city of Palacca. But I want to thank the citizens for their support, not only their support, but all their encouragement, as well as uh, thank staff for working as diligently as they did with me, giving me all the information that I need in order to make decisions with, 
and to help me understand the consequences of some of the decisions that we would make as well. Uh, but uh, last but not least, and I know my family is not here, but I thank them for all the support that they gave me as well and for allowing me to uh, give myself as a servant uh, for, the, for the city as well. And not only my family, but my, my, my friends as well, and putting up with me for the last 17 years to where I couldn't go and do certain things with that they wanted to do because of my commitment that I had made here with the city as well. So, uh, and to this commission as a whole, I, I felt like I wanted to do this tonight and not wait till December, <laughs> get it over with. Is and to this commission as a whole, uh, you all are a very, we are, you all are a very different commission that I've worked with, and I am very pleased to have worked with you all as well. I think you all are hands on. I think you guys, generous and lady, gen genuinely care about this city. Just, I can see the expressions on your faces when there are tough decisions to make. And one of the things that I do like about this commission, we have not backed down. The <coughs> issue that's come before us. We, we refuse to kick the can down the road. Uh, we have, I think we have done some. Or the cat. Uh, or the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, down the road. And I, but, I, I, but I think even with the tough decisions, and I think even though some of those decisions we were criticized for, mm -hmm. but when you look at the overall analysis of what we have done, it was the right decision that we made. And I want to thank you all for giving me an opportunity to serve with you all as well. <laughs> Commissioner elect, you got anything you want to say? That would be you. Uh, we want you to just stand up. We want to make sure we take the time out to recognize uh, Commissioner-elect Tammy Williams, Tammy McCaskill Williams, for uh, for congratulations on your new election. We look forward to working with you. This young man over here, the system I left, has set the bar high, and I'm sure his love for this community will make sure the transition is, is going to be a very smooth one. Um, so definitely, we we look forward to working with you. Now you have two roses between thorns. <laughs> I guess you're talking about Commissioner Campbell and Commissioner between Commissioner Campbell and Commissioner Borm, right? Because the rest of us would take offense to that. Well, that's okay. And and I've got I've got the last list of comments, and I'm off the clock. Um, first of all. I, I don't want to go back, and I, I know we continually go over this, but I, I, I want to thank all of our staff um, for the great job you did with the storm cleanup. I've gone around um, this area to other communities. We volunteered in St. John's County. They got hit really hard. I was in Daytona just recently, and they still have stuff all over the place. Um, and um, I, the job that you guys have done, um, the coordination that was put in place, um, particularly with Mr. Griffith um, and his staff, is second to none. When you look at Palatka, and, and, and we took our fair beating with the storm, but we were blessed. Um, you guys have done a wonderful job of getting us back to a place that looks like normal. And we thank you for your effort. We thank the young men uh, and women who work with you on a daily basis. Um, and we appreciate it. And I know a lot of times you get a lot of complaints and a lot of calls about pickup and things of that nature. but. Overall, there's a, um, a very pleased community about the work that's been done and the coordination that's been put in place to get us past the storm. And so we appreciate that. Um, Chief, again, um, great job on everything. Um, we look forward to basketball season coming up and, 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 and recreation. I think that's going to be your relief for, for, for accreditation. Um, but also, um, Palaka had a unique opportunity over the last week. Um, I had a great time um, with the commissioners and also Mr. Suggs, um, who took 100 <laughs> selfies. Um, when we went over, we got an opportunity. We got the call. Nadia, Nadia Garnett's one of the local citizens here who's moved on. Um, she's been working and 
she's been working in government dealing uh, specifically with uh, major campaigns all across the country. Um, and Nadia gave us a call. She gave me a call last week, and she said, "I've got some VIP access for, uh, you know, for the elected officials who want to come over um, to see the president." And of course, we jumped on it, and um, we went over. It was a great opportunity for us. We had, uh, well, some people had pretty good seats. Uh, <laughs> me, Chief Shaw, and uh, Mr. Suggs, we were um, we were on the floor. And so um, we had great, we had the best, we had the best position of all, but there was an opportunity for us to get an opportunity to go in and as a commission um, and hear the president address the community, regardless of what your political views are, any opportunity that you get to be in front of a sitting president um, is a great opportunity, regardless of what your stance is, because this is America. Um, and then on Saturday, I got another surprising phone call. Uh, now, Bill Clinton was coming to town, um, former President Bill Clinton was coming to town, to Palatka um, on an off-record visit. And I, in my years, I can't remember when a sitting president got here, um, uh, well, former president came to Palatka. Ms. Kitchens, when was the last time that you can remember? 1964, President Lyndon Johnson, okay. so, well, there you go. Yeah. So I was born in 72, so I missed it. So I can tell you. And so so it, it was a it was a it was a great opportunity. Um, one of the things that 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 really sat out to me was um, just the fact that we had a young lady who was 25 years old. It was her first time ever voting. She walked out of the precinct and she got an opportunity to take a photo with the former president. And I, I think that's going to make a lasting impression on her as a voter. Um, and I think in those moments, you can never do anything else to get them back. So regardless of what your political affiliation is or your thought process, any time that a former president thinks enough while out on the trail to come to Palaka, there are people around this country saying, well, what's going on so great in that little town? And they're going to venture out to find out what's going on in Palaka. When they get here, they're going to find out why we're the gym of the St. John's. And so uh, that was really a, a, a wonderful moment. Um, our country is in a, our country just elected a new president. Uh, we had a, a very um, polarizing election over the last over, over the last few months. But and there are people rioting, there are people picketing. But this is America, and and in our community, I'm very proud of Palatkins and Putnam County um, citizens because. We, re we responded with dignity, and we responded as Americans should respond. We're still very cohesive in what we do. Um, and this country um, needs to be one nation under God, just as we're one Palaka under God. Um, regardless of what your views are, um, there's majority rule and minority rights, and we have to be re mindful of everyone that's around, um, but we have to respect the results that come out in elections because that's what the true democratic process is about and i want to commend the citizens of our community um, for being mindful of that and being representative of what america should be and so i, I thank you for that and lastly um commissioner williams as i said before um commissioner elect williams we look forward to you coming commissioner norwood I've, over these last couple years uh, i think i've known you my whole life but over the last couple of years, um, I can tell you that you've been that person who's able to to kind of tap me on the shoulder from the other side of the room and, and, and kind of keep things in order. You're 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 a man of true order. You are um, you are a, a scholar of, uh, of of procedure and of what the rules should be. And you're in a, you're you're definitely a, a, a quality man. And I, and I, I see you as a friend. We're going to miss you on this commission. Um, we're going to miss the insightful comments that we get from you, and I can tell when your face has them coming. Um, <laughs> but we, we want to thank you for your service here. And we want to remind you that we will be calling on you and that you can't escape us. And, um, you know, we look forward to you having some opportunity to spend with your family as well. But we will definitely be appointing you to some ad hoc committee at a later date. <laughs>
And so the strippers is already like, started. <laughs> so kids are like for but uh, <laughs> But in all seriousness, we thank you. We're gonna miss you. And you you've you've created um a standard that's gonna be very tough to feel. And we look forward to Miss Williams doing just that. Um, so again, Commissioner Norwood, thank you for all that you do. Are there any further comments? I think our Rob has a lot of opportunity to express, but we still have another meeting. You know, go ahead. Okay. No, 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 we, we have another meeting while I do my meeting. Just don't cry. Motion to adjourn. <laughs>